So hi guys, welcome to uh, Casey's Online Journey. So tonight we have a very special guest. Um, he is actually one of my connections on LinkedIn. His name is Ash Borland. Hello, Ash. Hello, you're right. <laughs> it's so nice to see you. <laughs> it's, it's nice to see you too. <laughs> yeah. So Ash is actually um, a personal branding coach. He's also a podcaster and a speaker. And um, yeah, I would like to ask um, Ash. So um, Ash, can you tell us more about you? Yeah, sure. So yeah, so you did a really good intro there. Um, oh. so I <laughs> I'm a personal branding coach. Um, so I work with people on a one-to-one -one basis, mm. um, coaching them through personal branding, social influence, behavioral economics, um, psychology, things like that, mm -hmm. and how that applies to their online brand. Um, but And they also do um, speaking events for corporates and small businesses, kind of helping them understand how relevant this kind of personal brand and thing is right now because mm -hmm. it's quite a new thing it's a bit of a buzzword um yeah. so yeah that's me and, and obviously as well you said podcasting so i also have a i have a podcast that i run that's, that's quite successful called personal branding 101 podcast mm -hmm. um which is just me talking all the time because i like the sound of my own voice yeah and uh, <laughs> training yeah. people how to um it, i set it up for the people who couldn't who couldn't potentially afford me um but i still wanted to be able to help them so i set up this podcast that comes out once a week that kind of gives them tips and tricks if, if yes. they can't afford to me. Uh -huh. so, so yeah that's me okay <laughs> all right <laughs> so yeah so talking about uh, personal branding so we'd like to know more what is personal branding because you said yeah well when, when you talk when we chat uh, you, you told me that uh, personal branding is a combination of uh, content creation social influence and uh yeah so i would like to know more about that of course okay. yeah so so personal branding is um it's funny because personal branding is a bit of a buzzword mm. uh, so buzzword in other words you're, you're going to hear personal branding especially in the next two three years it's going to be used a lot and mm. what it actually means um can be quite confusing because it can mm. mean as well as what it's mean um mm -hmm. and it's something i started to discover so what I started to notice was my original career before I went into this and to the stuff, I was an actor. I was a singer and an actor. Oh, yeah. Oh, and, so uh, you have a good voice. You're a singer yeah, now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not so much now, but oh. yeah. And, uh, and so what I, what, what happened with me was we say with personal branding and, and how I frame it was personal mm -hmm. branding was just, is just reputation management. That's the way I see mm -hmm. it. So in other words, it's about writing your own story. Um, mm -hmm you have control of what people say and this all came about for me when i when i was acting oh. you get typecast do you know what i mean so people there's a typecasting you're the villain or you're oh. the good guy or mm. you're the, the you know the um the damsel in distress or the princess whatever you are mm -hmm. that is a brand and whether you realize it or not that's what people say about you so what i started to look into was you have control over that mm -hmm. but it's not just about um, putting yourself out on social media, which I think a lot of people think it is. Mm -hmm. A lot of people think personal branding is just the image that you put online, but mm. it's actually the whole thing. So it's about, mm. and that's when I said this to you, it's a combination of definitely uh -huh. social media, hugely, because that's our, I call that our digital identity. Uh -huh. But it's what it's about is your, your digital identity, so social media, and then your physical identity. In other words, the way you look, the way you act, the way you sound. Mm. The two of them need to kind of, match nice. and it's okay. a bit like and the way i describe it to my clients is if you ever buy a concert like a ticket for a, uh -huh. like a concert and you've bought their album and they sound amazing as a, as a musician mm -hmm. and then you hear them live and they're terrible you don't mm -hmm. like them anymore and it's the same uh -huh. thing you've got, you've got to try and create this kind of fully em embedded experience and the only way to do that in my opinion is um by using psychology, you got to use a lot of psychology, behavioral economics, mm. um, and as we said, social influence. Uh -huh. Say it's the what, not just what you say, but how you say it. Um, mm -hmm. Very deep topic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's very, uh, really broad. <laughs> yeah, very uh, broad. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, talking about content creation, so uh, can you tell us some ways or ideas on how uh, do we uh, create content? and uh, what type of content that we're going to yeah do and yeah, also how to get creative when we yeah. create the content yeah of okay uh, 
when you create content, um, mm -hmm. what I say to my clients and what I say to anyone, um, firstly, with creating content, you want to establish what type of creator you want to be. Mm -hmm. So uh, there are three archetypes. There are three types of creators. Okay. There are um, the expert. I'll go through it a little bit, but there's the expert, mm -hmm. the enthusiast, and the, enthusiast. and the curator. So there are the curator. three types of creators. Okay. And a common mistake I see all the time is people not understanding which one they are. So uh -huh. the, the expert, for example, is the guru, the, the, the professional, mm -hmm. the, whereas the curator is somebody who just loves the, uh, sorry, the enthusiast is someone who loves the journey. And the curator mm -hmm. is someone who takes other people's content and shares it. So that's uh, what okay. that is. Uh -huh. Big mistake I see from content creation is if you want to, if you're trying to, for example, be a business and be positioned mm -hmm. as somebody that people go to like myself, um, or like essentially anyone who's doing that, like especially social media, uh -huh. you want to position yourself as the expert. So the first thing you want to do is look at, first of all, I'm only going to make expert content. So how to videos, mm. value added content, things like that. Yeah. Don't mm. share other people's content because you, you undermine your own, your own credibility. Mm -hmm. The next thing then I would say for like content tips, uh -huh. is um, I would recommend, for me, it's always video. I think video is hugely, hugely powerful. Mm -hmm. um, do what makes you comfortable. But if you want to make, make good content to get the desired effect to build a strong personal brand, mm -hmm. I need to feel like I know you. And the only way I'm going to feel like I know you is by watching you listen like what we're doing now like if mm -hmm. i watched ours if i watched this and, I, and actually i did watch this i watched you interview a couple of other people on mm -hmm. your facebook page so i saw that mm -hmm. um so i knew what to expect and that's what we want with our clients we want to see so video content is really powerful mm -hmm. and then i would recommend um with the video content you it's uh not overdo it, not worrying about it too much about the quality. It's mm. actually more about, and the way that the way I got successful was doing short one minute videos every single day. So I did it every single day every without single fail, day. Uh -huh. every single day. And, um, okay. that's the, and, and I don't, I can't see why I've got clients who've just been massively successful just off the back of it as well. So every single day on one type of creator archetype. So I just sat down and said, I'm the expert. I'm going to make a video on how to build a personal brand mm -hmm. and I did it every single day and it just compounds. And that's what I'd say. If you're looking at making content, do that. I wouldn't overcomplicate it too much. I think too many people try to do all of it and, it, and you know, like written posts. If, if, for mm -hmm. example, if you're brilliant at taking photos, mm -hmm. do photos. If you're mm -hmm. brilliant at writing, do writing, do whatever okay. it is you're absolutely brilliant at. Um, do it, okay. and, and do it every day. <laughs> do it every day. Okay, so I'm gonna do it every day. <laughs> you do it every day. Yeah. Yeah. I'm watch you now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because actually, um, I am not actually comfortable with camera. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's just you know, like I've been trying to really, yeah, yeah. boosting my confidence to face in front good. of the camera. You're oh, very thank good you. on the camera. Like, and, and the you. thing is, if you're not confident with it that doesn't matter like i understand mm. um, a lot of people aren't a lot of people aren't um because i was an actor i was fine with it but then mm. i'm going to be honest with you like Karen, i still wasn't i still was really I, st I was really nervous when i started doing video for my business even mm. though i'd been acting but i um i would say do what you feel comfortable the best the first thing to do is do what you feel comfortable doing mm. but it's consistency so it is this thing of if you want to make the algorithms work for you if you want LinkedIn, for example, to index you and understand what you do, because at the end of the day, it's LinkedIn, has, like uh, LinkedIn's the main one, really. LinkedIn mm -hmm. and TikTok right mm -hmm. now. Um, but LinkedIn, it's effectively a social, it's effectively a search engine. The way its algorithm mm. works is not like any other thing I've seen before. It's a search engine. So it, you want to kind of teach it what you do. And the best way to do that is by doing daily content around mm -hmm. the single topic. So if, if you were, scared of going on camera you're not going to keep it up so you're better off doing written posts every day do you know what mm. i mean or a photo every day yeah, or yeah. A, but you want them to start to be to see your kind of content and know that they're going to expect it the next day so it's the same mm. it's repetitive you become part of their daily daily life really their daily ritual mm -hmm. so do you have like a, a planner for that for every day yeah okay yeah. Uh, i do okay. well I have a, I think I call it my digital, I have this thing called a digital daily ritual. Um, digital daily so I have a, okay. 
I have this thing. And so I get up at six in the morning and then I do, I film a video every day. Mm -hmm. and, I, and then I repurpose that video and push it across multiple platforms. And then uh -huh. I do an engagement strategy. So I engage mm. them with other people's content. So I go out and I'll engage with 15 people um, mm -hmm. every morning, you know, within a specific hashtag on LinkedIn, on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook. And then I, um, and I do that every single, so 15 people on each one. Mm -hmm. So oh. I'll be there 60 people. I do it every day. And that's ah. how, and it's consistency. It's over time. It, it, it will, it, it will, people will start to, um, people will start to follow you. It takes a long time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Is doing well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> really consistency is the key. <laughs> Massively. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. So I'm um, talking about social influence. Can you share some ways on how to increase our influence? Yeah, sure. Yeah, so, yeah. Social, mm -hmm. so social influence is a funny one. Social influence is, um, I noticed this one. So the, so the social influence is how you influence someone else. So think about, mm -hmm. for example, influencers in our mm -hmm. society. Influencers are people who we look up to. Um, and social influence can be used as a good thing or a bad thing. Mm -hmm. um, the way in which you say things, for example, and structure things and the structural content is, has a big impact on this. So, mm -hmm. so a good thing, for example, I'll just give you, I'll just write two, so I remember, because otherwise I'll go off into Pluto. So I've got yeah, loss okay. aversion, mm -hmm. and then there's uh, reciprocity. So I'll just talk into it. So two key ways, there's loads of ways you can do this, but first mm -hmm. one is loss aversion. So have you ever mm -hmm. heard of that before, loss aversion? So mm -hmm. yeah. what loss aversion is, and this is with social influence, if you, we always tell people in our content, for example, mm -hmm. we might say, I absolutely, the benefits of using me is this, 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 and this, you know, so the mm -hmm. benefits of using me is I'm going to help you build a personal brand. What people don't realize is from a social perspective, from a kind of a psychological behavioral perspective, mm -hmm. we don't, we massively favor uh, what we stand to lose over what we stand to gain. So mm -hmm. it's more powerful if you said, and I do this with my clients, I do this with people. I say, look, if you work with me, I will make sure that you keep your business, you know, or for example, you can highlight saying what you don't want is you don't want to lose the business you currently have and make your business become un irrelevant in the next 10 years. Mm. That's then a loss. So it's called a loss aversion. So we're more motivated to try and to stop ourselves from losing what we have, oh, as opposed yeah. to saying, if you use me, you're going to get better leads. What you what, Whereas if you said, if you use me, I'm going to stop you from losing out to other people. Mm -hmm. That's a big form of social influence. So the idea of this kind of power, the other one that's really cool. And then they, they sound a bit, when I work with my clients, oh. we get to the, uh, this, this is in session seven. So it's right at the end. And then they mm -hmm. go, um, cause it's an, it's an eight week course. And when we get to the end, they go, uh, they're like, Oh, you must be like a wizard. Cause when I start to tell them all the things I've done to them and I'll go, look, we did it here and you, and you bought into it. Oh yeah. Um, uh -huh. So mm. the other one that's really important, reciprocity. Mm -hmm. So reciprocity is, uh, I'm trying to sound too, too uh, big words because I, I realize this and people go, what are you talking about? But what I mean uh -huh. by reciprocity, reciprocity is when, if you buy me a birthday gift, like Karen, okay. so if you bought me a gift, mm -hmm. I have to give you a gift back because mm. it's, it's yeah. think about that. So uh -huh. I have to give a gift back. So when you create, and this is the thing about creating content and value added content, okay. you're creating with social influence, you're creating this. We as humans don't like to owe anybody. We don't like to owe money. We don't like to owe. We have mm. to feel like we've paid our debt. Now, if your content is really valuable and you ask for no call to action, you don't ask for people to buy your services. You don't, then what happens is you build this, this reciprocity imbalance. Mm -hmm which means uh, when you bring something out that you want to sell a course, for example, or uh -huh. your business, people will buy it because they mm. feel like they owe you. Or mm. when you need reviews or video testimonials, if you've built this up with social influence, with like giving out and knowing exactly where you're doing it, people mm -hmm. then, you know, when I launched my business, I got 27, I think 26, 27 LinkedIn reviews because mm -hmm. I'd done so much already for these people that it just took a phone, a message going, can you help me? Can you help me? Can you help? Because I built up this reciprocity and that's to do with social influence. Mm -hmm. People don't realize this. So if you think yeah. about this, it, uh, it's quite deep. And this is why we mm. said about Leon, when I was working with Leon, he was like, I like videos. And then we've been working on this and he's like, wow. <laughs> <Because> <laughs> if you add social media 
Mm. Plus your physical, the way that we're perceived as a person, plus you add so, uh, social influence into the mix. Mm -hmm. That's why people like Gary V, Gary Vaynerchuk, mm. and people like that are so successful mm. because they're doing this, they're doing this. You, like all of the big names you think of, they're doing the three things it's the social media, the, the physics, the digital identity, physical identity, and social influence. Those are the three mm. pillars. That's three. what. Okay. Whereas I've seen most people just think it's just posting content every day and it's going to make a difference. You need to have them all three in line and then it will, yeah. will blow up then. Mm. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> awesome. All right. So, okay. One last thing. <laughs> so Go about, um, yeah, social media strategy. So uh, can you tell us what are your strategies, especially for LinkedIn, which is mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, popular and also yeah. uh, we will talk about TikTok. So these two things, yeah, two platforms. Okay. Of course. So LinkedIn, uh -huh. um, LinkedIn right now. So yeah, Facebook. If you go for say Facebook and stuff, I think they're uh -huh. personally, I would, I would not, we wouldn't be wasting my time, but they're a lot harder to get. So if you want to, mm. if you're trying to build a brand now, you're going to be better off going to somewhere like LinkedIn or TikTok. Yeah. Um, much easier. Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. I, it's not worth. It's the, mm. the effort that it would take to build is very True. hard. Yeah. My opinion is I'd rather build a following on one of those smaller platforms and mm. then move them, migrate them over to, to the bigger ones. If I went once you've got a following. Mm. Um, so with LinkedIn, I would say again, it's uh, the, the, so the strategy for LinkedIn for anyone who's listened to this, the best, mm. the, like, the little tip I can give you talk about one thing and one thing only every single day. That's it. Don't, don't talk about multiple different things. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if you want to be the person that's known for, I don't know, say the person that's known for personal branding, mm. only talk about personal branding. Don't talk mm. about anything else. If you want to be known as the, if you're a, you know, a home developer, mm. only talk about that. If you want to be, if you're a mm. videographer, right, like Leon, like the person we spoke before, if you just talk about videos, don't talk about anything else. The reason why is... Um, because LinkedIn is is like a it's like a got a slight search engine feel to it, mm. it ranks people, so it ranks you. So you can type in. Mm -hmm. um, I know this because I had a business before I did this, and um, if I, I I had I I had a mortgage business and I mm -hmm. I was a first time buyer specialist and I only did content on first time buyers. This is mm -hmm. a long time ago, never. And within for a three week, four week period, I was ranked number one in the world for first time buyer because I only talked about first time buyer. So the way that you can do that for your, for anyone, if you're doing uh -huh. LinkedIn, one thing every day, consistent, and, and it, it will start to learn what you do and it will start to recommend you to people. Uh -huh. TikTok, uh, the entire opposite. <laughs> TikTok, <laughs> just again, um, TikTok, look at trending, you know, tips of the strategy. I look at trending topics and I look at, uh -huh. so LinkedIn's more quality over quantity. So like one post a day, maybe one, three posts a week, whatever it is. Mm, Whereas TikTok, okay. three or four a day um, oh. on, on the most randomest things. Like, but still keep it, keep it in like, the TikTok strategy is quite strange, but um, it, it, it works on like what they call a gift approach, but that's, that's a different thing. But it's, it, um, it can cause what you want to do with TikTok is effectively just do loads of videos. So, if you like, I'll make one in the morning and then I'll just make three or four during the day. Mm. Um, ones that what you'll find with TikTok, I wouldn't spend too much time creating on TikTok because the ones that do really well, there's no rhyme or reason to why they do well. It just, mm. you know what I mean? Like it's yeah. like throwing darts at dart and hoping mm. one of them sticks. Mm. So with TikTok, it's just volume. So the other one is is more quality and TikTok is just volume. So again, same Aww. topic because if you want it to be the same, go, or just go all in on TikTok with um, loads of content. So I'd say three minimum six be, would be optimal. Mm, okay. All right. Whoa. <laughs> I am blown yes. away. <laughs> but no, it's okay. really, it's really, really, really <laughs> reaching and really helpful. So thank you so much, Ash, for taking the time to My join pleasure. me in this interview. I myself have learned a lot from this, from personal branding, content creation, social influence, and so much more. And um, that's why I really love to uh, interview uh, influencer, uh, influencers like you. And I would yeah. like to share it 
also to my fellow Filipino people out there who are really, really interested to know more about personal branding because actually it is uh, some kind of new to us here. That's why I want them to educate and to, mm. yeah, to inform it's about new. this, what it is all about. It's new here, to be honest. It's new in England as well, don't worry. Oh, so, oh, <laughs> to be honest, funny. I would say um, the Philippines are, are a lot further ahead than, than we are here, mm, I would say. Yes, yes, uh, yes, I, I've got a lot of it, especially mm. in the social media front. True. Um, Asia, Philippines, they are mm. way better than they are here in the West. Um, they, they, and I think, and do you know where this has happened? I think a lot of people have used VAs, so virtual assistants, things like that, and used you guys out there, mm-hmm. which has made you better than everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> so I, like, it's, it's quite interesting. Like, there's not many, yeah, like, I think it, you guys are a lot more forward thinking in regards to this kind of digital personal branding space. So that's why mm. I was really interested to talk to you. Yeah, so, so thank you so much, us. I really enjoyed our talk today. It's really, whoa, awesome. <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> wow, yeah, brilliant. And just like what you said, uh, I like your uh, uh, like, uh, quote from you. Like yeah. um, you said that uh, you need to stand out on the crowd and yes, that's strive the online, right? So why blend in when you can stand out? So stand, stand out from the crowd and thrive online. And yes, use what you have learned from Ash. Uh, this uh, interview is so awesome. So use and put it into practice. Apply it, apply it, because it's really helpful. So thank you so much, Ash. Thank you so thank much. Thank you, for thank time. you so much. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bye. Bye. <laughs>